Hi folks, this is Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today I want to go over some of the main menu items in Decoder Pro. Before we get started, I want to point out one thing. There are a lot of features in Decoder Pro in these various menu selections that I never use and you will probably never ever use. Um, they've done a lot of work over the last 15, 20 years uh, that Decoder Pro has, has been around and they built this thing up with an amazing number of functions, uh, many of which um, you may never use. So I'm going to go through the main ones that I use on a regular basis and if you want to look at uh, some of these other features, go to the online manual at the JMRI website and it has a, a, a very good manual telling you what all of these different uh, functions and features actually do. At some time in the future I'm going to come back and we'll use some of these and I'll go into them in a little bit more depth. But for now I just want to go over the main functions that uh, I use on a regular basis and I think you will find useful. Okay, so let's look at the file menu. Uh, basically this is similar to most uh, Windows programs, um, the file selection. Um, it allows you to create a new roster window in case you wanted to add a new one uh, for somebody else's railroad or your club railroad, something like that. So it would create a new roster window just like the one you see in the background here. Uh, import decoder file. For every decoder made, there is a decoder definition file which has all of the basic CV settings and information about that decoder stored in it. And anytime you want to uh, program a new decoder, uh, you have to have the decoder definition file stored on your computer for that particular decoder. Okay? So if you look over here, you can see all these different MTH, Wild Diesel, TSU 1100 Steam. You know, all of these different ones exist in these decoder definition files. And anytime a new decoder comes out, you have to either go online and download it, or you can import it by using the URL link to go directly to it. I'll tell you right now, I typically, if I need to, to, uh, to uh, acquire a new definition file, I will uh, go to the website, the JMR website, download that particular file to my computer, and then import it this way. I rarely use the URL approach. It is just a lot simpler to download it and, and load it in using this option here. Uh, the reason I rarely use these is because I regularly update Decoder Pro. And every time you download a new version of Decoder Pro, it automatically downloads all of the new uh, decoder definition files with it. So keep it up to date and you don't have to worry about these decoder definition files. I probably have to do it about once a year, uh, import a decoder definition file this way. Another thing you can do is export and import roster entries. Uh, you can export and import a roster. Um, obviously, you, you could use these for backing up your, your database. I don't do it that way. I'll tell you how to do that later. Rebuilding the roster, if you have to, if you import a, a new file or, or uh, bring in a, a roster that you've backed up, then you'll need to rebuild the roster. And basically it goes in and takes the information that you've added and re-indexes it and prepares it so that the computer uh, program can access all of that information. Uh, validating an XML, fi XML file. Um, the XML files are what Decoder Pro uses for like its uh, decoder definition files and the like. And this actually will go through it and make sure it's a valid uh, file. You can open a Panel Pro window. One of these days we'll get into Panel Pro, but for right now I'm going to skip it. You can print a, you can preview your roster um, on the computer, either a selected entry or a summary of all of them, or you can then print that selected entry and that summary. So it gives you a way of, of, of putting together a printed copy of your roster or a summary of your roster. And of course the quit option. Okay, let's move on to edit. Within edit, you can create a new loco entry. You can see all of these locos here in Decoder Pro. Uh, I've entered each one of them as a new loco, and that's how you populate your roster. You can duplicate a loco. 
Let's say you have a TSU 1100 steam decoder in a locomotive and you buy another one or install another one in another locomotive. Well, instead of going through the process of, of, reading, of writing all of those CV values to that new uh, decoder, one thing you can do is create a duplicate of, say, this one here, uh, 612, and, uh, and then rename it to 611, for example, and you can then go back and save it and write all of those CV settings to the new decoder. And that way you don't have to go back and go through the process and all the steps of, re of programming that decoder, the new decoder. Um, you can also delete a locomotive. That's pretty straightforward. You just select it, hit delete, and it goes away. It'll ask you first if you really want to do that. And the preferences, we went through the preferences in previous uh, videos, so I'm not going to go down that road. Various settings. You can hide and show the summary pane. Summary pane is this area down here at the bottom. I'll show you. Obviously, you can make it come back. Another thing in there, you can reset the column widths in, in your roster entries. Uh, you can hide and show a roster image. Uh, you can take a photograph of your locomotive and include it with the roster uh, information here so that anytime you open up that roster, you can see what the lo locomotive looks like. I hope you already know. Uh, programming, you can select whether you're going to use the programming truck, programming on the main, or just edit only. So let's click programming track. Okay, so now it's set for the programming track. Uh, you can create roster groups, rename roster groups, and duplicate roster groups. Uh, at some time in the future I'll get into what roster groups are and why you want to rename them or duplicate some. Various actions. You can program. Uh, you can create labels and media. These are things that I never use. Uh, you can create a new throttle. These are virtual throttles um, uh, that you could use to uh, test your settings that you just made in a locomotive. Uh, you could load the default throttle layout, which is most of the time what you'll be doing. Uh, there's a special tool for uh, consisting locomotives. I typically uh, do my consisting by uh, writing directly to the CVs and uh, don't use this consisting tool. Um, you can control turnouts from the, from the, uh, the program. Um, you can control power uh, uh, to the programming track and, and, the, and, and the like. Um, you can attach a speedometer setup to Decoder Pro and use it for speed matching. Uh, that gets pretty complex because you have to install detectors on your layout in order for that to work. You can control, you can uh, program individual CVs. Um, you can multiple decoder control, pretty straightforward. Uh, again, something I never use and uh, don't know if you will. Uh, the Y throttle server, you can set that up so that people coming to your operating sessions can use their, uh, uh, their cell phones or their, their iPhones, whatever, uh, as a uh, throttle. And you can start a web server uh, on your computer. You can recreate your roster index again, uh, recreate a decoder index. These are a lot of things. Update your decoder definitions. There are just so many things that you can do in this program that uh, um, you'll never use and I never use. Loconet. Uh, we'll get into that in the future. There's a lot of things you can do. There's all kinds of things you can do as far as programming, uh, various uh, Digitrex uh, pieces of equipment. And uh, using uh, Decoder Pro makes it uh, so much easier to do that. But again, as I said, we'll do this in a, uh, in a later video. Um, you can minimize the window. And finally, there's the typical help menu. Uh, you can check for updates of the, comp of the system or of the program. Um, like I said, there's just so many things in here. Uh, you can look at the license and read it if you want. That pretty much um, wraps up what I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, again, I say in the next video, I will show you how to create a new entry uh, into a roster, add a new locomotive to the roster, and uh, how to go in and start programming it.
So um, we'll get into that in the next video. So come on back and, and uh, take a look. In the, in the meantime, go ahead and take a look at the JMRI website and uh, take a look at the online manual. Hopefully that will answer any questions that uh, have come up in your mind uh, as I have skipped over some of these other uh, features. So for now, that's all. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video.